right, so let's get into what I have in my heart this morning, and I want to remind you of what Bishop Hash said in 2021. It's so important. And it comes from Psalm 92, 13. He said, he had in his heart, planted in God to thrive. Planted, not inconsistent. You want to be planted, consistent in the things of God, and you're going to thrive. And my uh, statement that comes alongside this is growing. You can't, you can't grow if you're not planted. You can't grow if you're not getting in the Word. You can't grow if you're not praying. You can't grow if you're not around good leadership, good friends, and serving your way to your destiny. You just can't grow. So God has great things for us this morning as we're planted, and also we're growing together. Why? So we can serve better. There comes a point in time that we're in church that we need to volunteer to give of our time, our talents, our resources to be a blessing to other people. Now, today, I want to go to our second point on how to build a spiritual wall of protection around your life. I'm reading right now 21 Most Powerful Minutes in a Leader's Day by John Maxwell. And there's a, a, you know, a little bit of information I want to share from this book talking about Nehemiah and the rebuilding of the walls. We want to think about, you know, if, if our family walls seem to be broken down, if... Um, if something in our personal life, the walls seem to be broken down, it's time to either build the wall or it's time to repair that wall so the enemies just don't come and go. Uh, when, when the poet Robert Frost, it's a unique statement, but it's true, he said this, he said, he wrote, something there is that doesn't love a wall. Now, he was commenting on how walls tend to fall down. Listen, walls tend to fall down over time when left to the elements. Our prayer life wall can be deteriorated if we're not continually participating in daily prayer. Our, our word wall can be um, torn down by the enemy because he loves to come into our life and steal, kill, and destroy. So we've got to build up that, that spiritual wall of protection of the word and prayer. And that's what I'm emphasizing today is prayer. But listen to this. When the, um, this author was commenting on how walls tend to fall down over time when it's left unattended or left to the elements. Knowing that, imagine the condition of a wall after being ripped down by a conquering army, talking about Jerusalem's wall, and then allowed to sit unrepaired for more than a century. Jerusalem's walls were torn down for more than a century. And that describes the wall of Jerusalem. When Hanani uh, returned to see his brother Nehemiah in the city of Shushan. Uh, a city wall in ruins was a bad thing in those days. Well, why? Well, obviously, not only did it leave a city open to the attack of the enemies that were surrounding them, but it also prompted ridicule from neighboring powers. If you read the word before you do anything, it goes on to say, count the cost. Make sure you're ready to do what it takes to fully build that wall, to fully build whatever you're, you're wanting to build. So a city wall in ruins in those days um, left, left uh, Jerusalem open to attacks constantly and also prompted ridicule from neighboring powers. With Jerusalem... The unrepaired wall, listen to this, the unrepaired wall was also um, gave foreigners a reason to scorn God. It wasn't representing God's uh, city well. That's why Nehemiah wept. That's why, that's why he mourned. That's why he fasted. That's why he prayed when he heard the news of the wall's condition. How does that apply to us? Man, there's family members in our lives that have broken walls, and sometimes it just makes you want to weep because the enemy is having a heyday there because they're in wrong lifestyles or, or they yielded to wrong stuff. And really, it just causes us to weep when people go through things in the ministry, and we try to help them. And if they, try, if they t continue to go in the wrong direction, it's like watching somebody literally have, have the attack of the enemy, and we can't do anything about it. Because there's always something God's going to require you to do as he does, does what we cannot do. 
So during the 120 years after the walls were torn down, talking about Jerusalem's walls by the Chaldeans, literally, listen to this, literally tens of thousands of Jerusalem's people had seen the walls down and they did nothing about it. They saw this deterioration over 120 years and did nothing about it. Maybe then, maybe, maybe they saw the rebuilding of the wall as an impossible challenge. Maybe um, uh, even in the city of plenty of workers, they, they just, they were overwhelmed by the project. What the people needed was someone to rally them, uh, plan their course of action, and take them through the rebuilding process. You know, uh, I just um, met with Bishop Hash and I had my boarding early, board meeting earlier this year, and my wife and I submitted all of our information that we submitted to our board to Bishop Hash. So we have a leader over our lives. Bishop and Lady Joy are our pastors. We talk with them. We consult with them. We counsel with them. We submit our information. And uh, also the Hagans, we, we're on their leadership team, as you know. We oversee ministries in three states of the southeast region for them on their behalf. But... Uh, Anyway, we want, we want to see from different leadership, you know, in this situation, people weren't doing anything. What did they need? They needed a leader. They needed a leader. God tapped Nehemiah on the shoulder to give him the task of rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. None of Jerusalem's neighbors wanted to see the Jews rebuild their walls because they were easy prey for them. But when they got their wall up, uh, it, it was more difficult, of course, to invade the city. And uh, several enemy leaders, they conspired against Nehemiah and the people, but Nehemiah saw the danger coming and he planned accordingly. Listen, he didn't give in to the plots of, of his enemies. And when the people sensed danger, he formulated strategies, not only to defend the city, but keep the people building the wall at the same time. Even there's a reference in Nehemiah where it talks about and with one hand, uh, the people were building the wall, but with the other hand, they had a weapon to fend off the enemies. What a great picture of our life. We need to have the sword of the Spirit in our life as we build things in our life, as we go in our daily lives, and also we're protecting ourselves with the Word and prayer. And listen to this. This is miraculous. But Nehemiah, who led this uh, project to rebuild the wall, Nehemiah and the people needed only 52 days to rebuild a city that was in ruins over 120 years. What am I saying? We can get with it. We can put extreme effort into repairing a wall and into building a wall if we don't have one. And it doesn't have to take that long if we mean business, if we're humble, if we uh, allow ourselves to be corrected, allow ourselves to be taught to be under good leadership that will help us navigate building walls and doing other projects. So I'm going to give you some action steps today. I won't finish today, but I'm going to give you some action steps today that you, you can take to build or repair a wall of protection around your life. The first thing we talked about was read and listen to the Bible. How often? Every single day. I've got my Version church app. I'm going through the New Testament uh, again this year, and I also like to hear a proverb of day, and then I do my reading and, and my studying for messages, but I first have just a devotion time with God. So the first point we said was read and listen to the Bible every day, and then today pray every day. Listen, uh, you might be facing hard times right now, but the Word's going to help you rebuild. The presence of God's going to help you rebuild that wall. Dad Hagen said it like this, stay put in the hard places and you will eventually rest upon the mountaintop. If you stay put in the hard places, doing these principles we're talking about, you will eventually rest upon the mountaintop. And it doesn't have to take that long. So number one, read and listen to the Bible every day. God told Joshua in Joshua 1.7, only you be strong and very courageous. Why? That you may do according to all the law or the word which was written by Moses, my servant, that he commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left hand, 
Why? That thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Having God's prosperity on our life in every aspect of our life will not happen if we're not prayers, if we're not people of the Word of God that learn how to apply the Word and learn the Word of faith, getting that Word in your heart about whatever you're facing and speaking what God says about your situation. That's the sword of the Spirit, and that's the way we fight our battles. So according to this verse, a great part of our daily victory, it depends on our faithfully sticking with the Word of God. Like I, I, to, I tell you often that my wife and I, first thing in the morning, we like to hear somebody ministering the Word. We like to hear Dad Hagen. We like to hear Joyce Meyer. And that's part of our hearing the Word for the day. Then also, I do my version where, I, where I'm reading it, but I'm listening to it at the same time, just going through the plan. And then I physically uh, get into some vote devotions and different things. I, I tell you sometimes what I do just so that it may prompt uh, something that you might want to do. So we should not allow other voices or other ideas sidetrack us along the way. No one's voice, and I've said it several times now again, uh, repetition is the mother of better learning. Listen, no one and no one's voice should be above the Word of God or what the Spirit of God is saying to you that aligns with the Word of God. So let's always remember that. The instructions that we follow... They could be good instructions or they can be bad instructions. We're given good instructions today. And these instructions we follow will determine the future that we create. We can't blame this on the devil. We can't blame this on God. We can't blame this on people that have disappointed us. No, it's time for us to take personal responsibility and do our own praying and do our own reading of the Word. Dad Hagen put it this way, prayer Daily prayer, number two, it's easier to talk to God than it is most people. <laughs> because when I'm in the presence of God and it goes silent, it's not awkward. It's just good to be in the presence of God. Uh, you know, there's people that you might know or maybe you just have really opposite personalities and it's almost awkward to find things to say. <laughs> but uh, a good thing to do in that time is ask them about their self, care about them, ask about their family, ask about their job. And uh, when they begin to talk, sometimes it opens up things and the dialogue is easier. But God is easier to talk to than most people, I've found, and that's so true. And Dad Hagen put it this way, prayer is successful only when, I'm going to emphasize this, only when it is based on the promises of God. He goes on to say, if we don't stand by the word, although God wants to stand by us, he can't. I said it. He said he can't. God can't help us because the only way God works is through his word. Remember, God only works and moves in line with his word, which is his will. He is bound himself to his word. So if you don't have the Word of God in the middle of your prayer life, you're limiting God. You're robbing God of an opportunity to take care of his son or his daughter. That's sobering, but it is true. So we need to incorporate prayer as a part of a, of a plan to build a wall of protection around our life. Let's look at Psalm 5 and verse 3. Psalm 5 and verse 3, it says, David, David wrote his commitment to spending time with God every morning. And that's a good time that we can meet with Him, but also you might have a different schedule, but make sure you set a time to pray. And He said, my voice shall thou hear in the morning, God, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. It's good to look up so things don't tear you down. It's good to look up to God. God, good morning. God, Jesus, good morning. Holy Spirit, good morning. It's another day. And I'm here to fulfill what you want me to do today. And I'm just going to look up so I can navigate everything else that's around me. David was surrounded by enemies both inside and outside of his home. And he was tempted to struggle in his emotions as a result. And we can all relate with that. 
Thank you. I'm so glad that stories are told by David how he did physically or emotionally go through different things, but he kept God and his word and prayer as a center focus of his life, and God always brought him out of the situation, even though it was very difficult. So David knew he needed to start every day looking up, or things would escalate to the point that could take him down. Look up or be taken down. Look up or be taken down. One more time. Look up or be taken down. That's on us. And everybody has 24 hours to manage. What are we going to do within the context of that day? Or I know I'm going to look up at some point in that day. Because I know I could be taken down if I'm not looking up. If we neglect looking up, we will end up troubled, nervous, anxious, worried, and will lack spiritual power from God in our life. And one thing I know about spiritual power, when, you, when you're in the Word of God, you not, might not feel like things are happening, but there's an empowerment, there's a strengthening happening. There's all the different metaphors that I talked about. Go back and listen to that uh, three, four weeks. We did that right before this teaching today. All the different metaphors of what God's Word does. But if we neglect looking up, if we neglect the Word, we will end up troubled, nervous, anxious, worried, and will lack spiritual power to face what, what we're going through. You can't face the enemy in your own power. Uh, he's stronger than we are in the flesh. But listen, thank God for the anointing. Thank God for God's power. It's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the living God. I'm so glad He's in me. He strengthens me. He quickens me to face any attack and any challenge with the Word. Hudson Taylor, who was a founder of Inland Chinese uh, Mission, said this, We are a supernatural people, born again by a supernatural birth, kept by a supernatural power, sustained on supernatural food, taught by a supernatural teacher from a supernatural book, we're led by a supernatural captain in right paths to assure victories. Are we allowing our captain to navigate where we're going? If we practice looking up, we'll be more at peace. We'll have a settling. We'll have a rest about our lives. And that's why it's a daily thing. Because today you might be going through a season that's not difficult. You want to be in that season doing your basic things of looking up of uh, bu building or repairing that spiritual wall so that when the enemy tries to come against us, those walls are intact. And I believe that um, even these walls of Jerusalem, they weren't small walls. They were like seven feet thick, man. And uh, so that, that would be a great uh, form of protection about the enemy trying to come in and we'd have the high ground to be able to deal with him. You want to always have the high ground. Look up. And you'll have that high ground. So we're led by a supernatural captain in right places to assure victories. If we practice looking up, we'll be at peace. If we practice looking up, we'll have a right position. And we'll be using our authority in Christ to rule and reign on this earth. We'll feel confident that we've done what is right. And we'll experience the power of God to overcome the daily problems we're facing in life. We all face life. Now, some of you might be in the ch a challenging season right now. Well, if you didn't have your walls built up, you, you need to repair them so that you can kick the enemy out of there in the name of Jesus and then have protection around you. You know, we're, the Word says that we, uh, God encamps around about us with the angels of God. I'm so glad. One of the things I pray over you every day is that, God, I plead the blood of Jesus over your life. I put a wall of protection around my domain, which includes my family, my extended family, my family here at Harvest Church, my Rama family, my leaders. I always surround them with the blood of Jesus. And I thank God his angels do encamp around about us because we fear God. So thankful. And as we speak the word, the word says the angels of God hearken unto that voice of the word of God. God watches over his word to perform it, but also the angels are helping perform the word as well. So thank God for confidence. In Psalm 34, 4, it says, I asked the Lord for help, 
and he saved me from all of my fears. The message says it like this, God met me more than halfway. He, he freed me from my anxious fears. Then Psalm 34, 17 says, the Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all of their trouble. How many of their troubles? All of our troubles. We go to the Lord with his word. He hears us and he watches over his word and things begin to turn around. Now your life might be like the Titanic. You've been going in, in some direction so long and you're so entrenched in that wrong way that now that you see the danger heading, it, you know, it's difficult to turn that ship real quick because you didn't get in that situation overnight. And sometimes you have to be faithful, persevere as that ship is slowly turned. And with God's help, you'll miss that iceberg that will destroy other people's lives. First Thessalonians, well, no, let's read Ephesians chapter 6. I'll be actually teaching on the armor of God, but not today. But it says, be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. That's why I say, oh my goodness, God, I'm looking up to you today. Refill me with your Holy Spirit. Refill me with your power. As I pray in the Holy Spirit, you're recharging my battery. You're helping rebuild my walls. And I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Take all the help you can get. Every weapon God has issued so that when it's all over but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Thank God. I'm still standing, having done all to stand. The truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. God's Word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in the ongoing warfare of life. Prayer, and this uh, message translates says, pray hard and long, but make sure you don't pray in the flesh where you're just grinding your prayer life. No, I understand what, what they're saying. You want to pray consistently. You, your prayer life doesn't have to be limited to, to just a space and a time. I, I like to talk to God throughout my day. I like to, uh, if something crops up, I don't wait till my prayer time to deal with it. Uh, sometimes I pause just to get into the Word of God about it and to be built up in faith about it. But other times, because I'm already there, I, I take care of things right away. I rebuke that foul spirit that's trying to attach itself to my life or, or my family or my ministry or my region or my leaders. You cease and desist all your operations in Jesus' name. Now, that's just using the authority we has a, have as a believer in Christ, but I do that quite consistently, even daily, on behalf of our lives and ministry. Prayer, pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. That's one of the reasons why we have service groups here at Harvest Church, where you volunteer, you're on a team. In some, in some situations where you have difficulties, people are, will look after you. People want to know you're okay. People need, want to know if you're in need. Um, that's why even you get into a small group, get into a group of people where they know you. They can know what's going on in your life. That's why we have, um, I think we started like 17 new small groups in 2020. And we have all kinds of groups that we're going to be uh, starting, marriage groups, uh, different groups that we can find ourselves engaged in and, and we can do life together. Uh, that's another wall that has to be rebuilt. Who's your friends? If you've had wrong influences in your life, your wall's torn down. And that's why we've got to watch who we hang out with. We want to be hang out with people of like precious faith that are looking for us, that, that, you know, that we can be accountable to if we're not in church. Uh, what's going on? I didn't see you the last week or two. And just care about you that way. Or sometimes you're just placed you're on someone else's heart and they call you. You okay? Can I pray for you? What can I do for you? We're serving one another as well. And that's good. We need each other. I'll say it again. We need each other. We need to do life together. 
So keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. You know, there's been times in the church that people have dropped out and we didn't know about it. Why? Because they weren't involved in a small group or they weren't serving. We want to know you're here. We want to know that, um, you know, that you're taken care of in the event that you go through difficult situations. It's interesting because, again, as you're a part of a small group, not only um, do people at times look after you, but then all of a sudden, when you're in a good space, you, you begin to look after others. It's, it's just really the way the body of Christ needs to be looking after each other. So we can actually learn to live in a continual state of fellowshipping, with the Lord in prayer. You might say, how, how do I pray all the time? Well, it's not so much being distracted at work in, in, you know, in a prayer mode because you got to work. You know, if you don't work, we can't, you know, make a living to pay expenses. Uh, but no, but still along the way or in between things, you, you could be saying, praise God. I'm looking to you today, God. And just, I, I like to pray in the spirit throughout the day. And, um, the word says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 in the message, it says, Be cheerful no matter what. Pray all the time. Thank God no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you who belong to Christ Jesus to live. This is the way. Is that Mandalorian? This is the way. Mandalorian. I'm just kidding. You all like Mandalorian? My family does. But this is the way God wants you to belong to Christ Jesus and to live. Becoming intentional about praying on a daily basis, every day. You know what it does? It confirms our commitment to God that we are serious. And it also just does us more good than we can imagine. Luke 18, 1 through 2 says, Also Jesus told them, his disciples, a parable to the effect about prayer. He said, They ought to always pray and not to turn coward, not to faint, not to lose heart, not to give up. So if we are lacking in our prayer life, we're going to be lacking in strength. And what happens then? We fall coward, we turn back to our old mess, uh, we faint, we give up, we lose heart. And uh, so there are negative effects of not praying, but then again, there are positive effect, effects to praying. You know, we have strength. We're not going to give up. We're going to face the enemy. We're going to stand having done, done all the stand because we have that supernatural power of God on our life. I know I can tell the effects, and I'm sure you can also. I can tell the effects on me when, I, when I'm not praying enough. It's not that I'm not praying. I'm just not praying enough. Or I'm not engaged enough in prayer. There are times where you have to have more engagement in prayer just to get through the season you're in. And we want to face a season going into a good one or a bad one filled and strengthened with God through prayer and His Word. Prayer opens our hearts. Well, hold on a second. I got a few more things to say about prayer. If you gave up on something, if you gave up on something, you stopped praying about it. If you gave up on something, you stopped praying about it. We can see in the Word of God, Jesus prayed consistently. He's our example. If Jesus needs to pray, don't you think we need to? And listen to this. We all need to pull aside or what's going to happen? We'll be pulled apart. We need to pull aside or we'll be pulled apart. We need to look up or we can be taken down. So prayer opens our hearts to receive from God. And it sets the tone for our day as we expect God's guiding presence and his goodness to manifest in our life. Daily prayer helps us to be more spiritually attuned to the things of God. When you have a good prayer life, it's like you're dialed in and you're hearing clearly. There's no static. And remember, in the old days, we used to have radios that we'd have to adjust because it was in between channels and just a small adjustment would clear it up. Or we needed more power. We needed an amplifier to get more power to send the signal stronger that we could tune in. So, uh, prayer will heighten, it will strengthen us, and it will heighten our spiritual sensitivity, and we need that in these days. Kenneth Hagin says something very sobering. We're going to begin to wrap this up here in a minute. Kenneth Hagin 
said something so sobering, and I watched his life for years. He said, I feel sorry for people who don't know how to pray. When the crisis of life come, they know how to say words, but just spouting off words into the atmosphere, that's not praying. The person at the greatest disadvantage on earth is the person who doesn't pray or doesn't know how to pray. That's why we talk about these things. That's why we have even small groups that meet and emphasize prayer. My goodness. E.M. Bounds said it like this. Nothing is more important to God than prayer in dealing with mankind. It is important for man to pray. It's important. I think we caught that by now, haven't we? Failure to pray is failure along the whole line of life. It is a failure of duty, service, and spiritual progress. God must help people by prayer. He who does not pray, therefore, robs himself of God's help and places God where he cannot help man. Man must pray to God if love for God is to exist. You know, I just sort of have a thought come in my mind right now, all of you viewing online. Why don't you make a comment of what you're getting from this message today? Why don't you make a comment of looking up or you can be taken down? Why don't you, look, why don't, why don't you make a comment about if you don't pull aside, you'll be pulled apart? Make a comment of the most significant thing. I want to read them. The most significant thing you're getting out of today's message. James 4.2 says, you do not have, Why? Because you do not ask it of God. And matter of fact, it goes on to say, or you ask amiss. Your your life might not be together. And that's like a uh, sounding brass or tingling cymbal. Or it's just, it's not the volume or the tune that you need to come and approach God to be effective. Pastor Reggie Scarborough said it like this. This implies that failure to ask God deprives us of what God would otherwise have given to us. Man, that should just take, take us up in prayer right there. He said it a little bit different, but let's say it one more time. This implies that failure to ask deprives us of what God would otherwise have given to us. And here's the prayer that I'm going to break down more in detail. We'll have next week our Super Bowl Sunday. be a great message there. But then the week after, we're going to continue in this series of how to build a spiritual wall or rebuild the spiritual wall around our life. What's the first point? Read and listen to the Word of God. The second point we're on, pray every day. God is the easiest person you'll ever talk to. Matthew 6 and verse 8, here's the prayer, sort of a model that we bring out some points that could be a good structure for you to have as your prayer life. Yeah, I do it in mine. Uh, There are some days I'm led to go differently, but most of the time I always do the Lord's Prayer and I pray out certain things in different, different aspects of this prayer. It says, your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask. This is Matthew 6, 8 through 13. Your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. And in this manner pray, our Father in heaven. See, He approaches the Father. He's looking up. Hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom is your kingdom come. Now we know the kingdom has come. It is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The physical kingdom hasn't come yet, but the spiritual kingdom has. It's when we receive Christ, we've been, we're made the right, right standing with God. We have peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And one of my prayers is, God, help us as a church and the body of Christ to spread this kingdom throughout this whole word, world. And it goes on to say, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I like to say, God, your will be done in my whole domain. I'm not going to go through it all right now. But God, your plans be done in my life, in, in my responsibilities. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, God. Your plans, your purposes, your pursuits. Nevertheless, God. God, if I'm praying in a certain direction and it's not your perfect will, I don't want to settle for the the good or the acceptable will of God. I want to settle for the perfect will of God. Never let me settle. Go with your route if I'm praying 
in a wrong route in Jesus' name. Forgive us of our debts as we, as we forgive our debtors. It's not only one thing to forgive, get forgiveness. There's anything bothering your heart, but also you can't hold things against people. You got you to forgive them and let it go. And you can do it because God asked us to. And don't lead us into temptation. God is leading us by the Holy Spirit to, to, uh, to miss bad things happening and to lead us into good things happening. He leads us away from temptation. And also, thank God, He delivers us from the evil one. And then we complete it in worship and prayer. For yours is the kingdom, and yours is the power, and yours is the glory forever and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. That's where we're going to go today in our service. Let me pray for you. And matter of fact, I want to pray over the offering that we received a little while ago. Father, I just pray that according to your word, when we tithe and we give, you open the windows of heaven and you pour us out the blessing. There's not room enough to receive it. And you rebuke the devourer on our behalf. And Father, so we thank you for doing this. And God, we've given today and your word says give. And it shall be given unto us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Will men give unto our bosom for the day? Same measure that we meet, it'll be back, brought back to us in Jesus' name. Thank you for blessing us. Father, thank you for reminding us. Thank you for helping us rebuild the walls. Thank you for helping us build the walls. Oh, Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the opportunity and the ability and the privilege of prayer. Thank you, Father. I bless this congregation. I bless all those viewing online. In the name of Jesus, be empowered to prosper. No, oh, God, we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, all the dominion. In Jesus' name, amen. Maybe you heard this word today and you felt like, man, I do need to share this message with somebody I know. So just get in that button there on, on the live feed on the Facebook page and share it. Also, don't forget, comment. Comment on what was talked about today. And then when I get home later on today, I'm going to look at these uh, comments that have been made. How did it change my life? What perspective did it change? Was it a blessing to you? Yep, we're going to look up so we're not pulled down. We're going to pull apart. No, we're not going to pull apart. <laughs> if we don't pray, we will. We're going to pull aside so we're not pulled apart. 